Hey people, Mike Martin's here with the Mike Martin channel. Thanks for joining me, liking, subscribing, being part of the channel, and the whole nine yards. I got an awesome video for you guys. We're going to kind of retake a look at people borrowing more and more on their homes. Why are they borrowing more and more on their homes? Let's take a look. And we've been talking about people using homes as ATM machines for the last 10 years on this channel. And it's been now skyrocketing under out of control. It seemed to be under control for a bit. It's nah, nothing's under control when it comes to competing with inflation, competing with money laundering, competing with your brother in Arizona that bought a four bedroom for 190 grand. But you live in Canada and you got to one up him. Good luck. All right. What's Better Dwelling reporting today? Well, Better Dwelling has got a really good article and I want to share it with you guys. Canadians took out two billion in HELOC debt in over 28 days, most since 2012. And if you go back to our channel, that's when we started. Uh, ba oh, tw uh, that's when we started a our second channel because our first one got taken down. Canadian interest rates are on the rise, and households apparently took that as a warning to borrow as much as possible, unless it's fixed. But what if it's unvariable? That's the question. Uh, filings with the Office of Superintendent of Financial Institutions O. SFI show whole equity line of credit balances surged higher in February. Over 28 days, Canadians borrowed two million more in HELOC debt, uh, the most uh, for uh, for a month since 2012. A month, and you would think, like, you know, February is the, one of the coldest months of the year in Canada. You would think wholeheartedly that people wouldn't be borrowing so much to go on vacations and buy boats and stuff. But what are they doing? Well, they're eating. They're using the money to eat. So here it is on the channel. Let's go over here. Uh, homes are new ATM machines. Borrow People borrowing too much. Most Canadians can't afford these mortgages. No one is calculating their TDS and cash flows. TDS is total debt service ratio, right, guys? We talked about it on the show many times. Uh, cash flow sheets as homes continue to skyrocket. People borrow against them. For That's just my opinion there. Homes, the new ATM machines, five years ago. Housing ATM machine, massive default, three years ago. And people are house broke using equity in their homes as ATM machines to get basic necessities four years ago. So this has been happening for a long time. Homeowners going broke one year ago. Canadians are borrowing against real estate at the fastest pace ever using homes as ATM machines four years ago. So it's, it's, it's you know, just type in ATM machine across our channel and you'll find a ton of of discussion on this. Canadians owe 168.5 billion in HELOC debt. Canadian households have been uh, tapering on their HELOC borrowing, but they're back with a vengeance. So I said it kind of cooled down for a bit, but it's back with a vengeance. The balance hit 168.5 billion in February, up 1.2%. 2 billion from the month before. Households now owe 1.4%, 2.3 billion more in HELOC debt than they ever did a year ago. Balances haven't been this high since December 2020, uh, reversing 13 months of chipping away at the balance in just one month. So people paid it down as they went and that's and then they as they chipped away they had to borrow it all back so what we're talking about that here it is people taking on too much debt so you go to the channel and you search across debt you will find people taking on too much debt massive debt loads wages disappearing to inflation two years ago canadians taking on too much debt the mother of all debt loads credit card debt going nuts three years ago uh, mortgage debt passes 80 percent of gdp what this means, mortgage debt in Canadian uh, in Canada is growing much faster than the country's economy. So people are, are borrowing more than what the economy is uh, revenueing. Uh, reverse mortgage debt is huge. Two years ago, uh, Canadians are drowning in debt, and four years ago. So there, it just keeps going on and on and on. Uh, here we go. Average American has 90k in debt. Eight million just entered poverty uh, market, and that's. But this is it with the Amer average American. But that's a lot of them own homes, though. Mind you, you know, uh, 70, 80, $140,000 homes. Some of them have 200000 and they pay down their debt. That's not that bad on, the, on hindsight. It's not actually that bad because they actually have something. All right, let's go back to the article. There's a Canadian HELOC debt. The outstanding balance of Canadian home equity line of credit held by institutions. So this is by institutions. And this is it in billions, guys. So this is not pesos. This is Canadian dollars. So there it is right there. What, what's, let's put that mouse over here. Um, right there. February 22nd, Canadian in billions, 168.5. There's the chipping away they said here back in, let's say, 20 around there. They kind of chipped away at it. And 
it's growing and it's and it grew it actually went up substantially actually wow wow it did actually wow the Canadian HELOC debt is rising at the fastest pace since 2021. HELOC balances grew at the fastest annual rate in nearly a decade. Uh, growth in February might sound small as 1.4, but Canada hasn't seen credit segment rise this fast since May 2013. It might not sound like much. Yes, it actually is, guys. But this is an unusually fast increase for a very large segment of debt with sub uh, substantial uh, uh, interest costs. But that's not what's Interesting, it's happening in just February, that is. Canadian HELOC growth, so you could see it here. It was kind of somewhat tapering, and then it just went back at people borrowing against their uh, their homes, using them as, as ATM machines, right? But why are they using them as ATM machines? Well, because Canada, Canadian proper, is actually competing with the money laundering. The hundreds of billion dollars that's been laundered through Canada through real estate via fentanyl sales coming from Chinese factories and Chinese gangs, that money is being re-laundered into real estate and the local Canadian has to keep up with that dirty money. And even Huffington Post wrote, is Canada's economy addicted to money laundering? So that's why a lot of Canadians are, are, are buying uh, houses that that you the same house in Alabama is like 70 grand and they're paying two three million dollars for it here in Vancouver the same house in in a good part of Florida is a hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars with maybe an acre or two of land y you see where I'm getting with this here right you're not getting your bang for your buck here in Canada you're got nine cold nine months of cold weather and yeah I'm not going to get into that too deep but let's keep moving on so there it is. Canadians, here's the bread and butter here. Canadian, no, the, the meat and potatoes. Canadians borrowed $2 billion more in HELOC debt in over 28 days. That's the what stands out right there. The biggest takeaway from February HELOC numbers is the mind-blowing growth seen in, in just over 28 days. An increase of $2 billion in the month is the largest single-month increase since 2012, excluding 2009. It's only occurred for 10 months in the past 30, 386 months. See, there you go. It's only occurred for 10 months in the past 386 months. For some reason, 2009 seemed to have been the year everyone was in the mood to take out an exceptional amount of cash. Why? Because if you go back to 2009, 2010, the people were having a tough time getting into the markets because it was already 16 to, to 15 to 20 times their annual income to buy a house in some Canadian major cities. So they felt that they were just going to take out more debt and keep it going, right? But then Canada opened up its doors to money laundering in 2010 during the 2010 Olympics in Vancouver, and that basically took over and basically took over a housing market or housing exporting market, so to say. See, uh, uh, 2008 seems to have been the year that everyone was in the mood to take out an exceptional amount of cash from their home. The monthly increases reported rep represented 87% of the net increase of HELOC debt in the past 12 months. And unclear why Canadians all of a sudden needed $2 billion in HELOC debt uh, over uh, in over just 28 days in February. The RRSP cutoff for this tax cycle was due in February, which may have led people to borrow some home equity to top it off. But you're not getting back the return off of what interest rates may go up. So you're not hedging properly. It was all also a month before the rate hike. So it's possible some some cash may have allocated to down payments to secure financing to lock in purchases before the rate hikes. Could be that. It also, it's uh, anyone's guess, but it is surprising to see borrowers dive into debt right after the central bank tells them to pay it down. So there it is right there. People taking out uh, dangerous amounts of debt. So here it is, guys. This is what I want to show you. You go to parts in central uh, Florida. You can go to parts in, in Georgia. You can go to parts in Alabama. You can go to parts in the south, which is still pretty conservative. And a family can start a life. A family doesn't have to drown in debt. And this is what I'm talking about. Bank for your buck. I lived in the south, and I had nothing but good times living down there. So there it is right there. It just goes on and on. And you can't even build this in Canada for that much money. That's that's the problem. That's the problem we're facing here uh, in Canada. And this is what I've been uh, in pages, endless amount of pages of just properties that are within reach of working for a 7-Eleven down in, in the south. You could work for a 7-Eleven food store or something, packing groceries, minimal stress level. And you could buy something like this on land and actually have 
a life and not drowned in debt. The reason why houses are that price there is because wages are tied to mortgages, not money laundering. Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, and the blue states of America are tied to money laundering, and that's why you're seeing a marifornia. So guys, thanks for joining, liking, subscribing, being part of the channel. Uh, I really appreciate all these years, people, uh, you know, by my side, or people commenting and supportive uh, these last 10, 11, 12 years. First channel got taken down with 36,000 subs. Then I uh, reinstated the channel in 2012. Many videos are already missing. Hundreds of them are missing. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys on the flip side. See you guys on Saturday night on Mike in the Night live on Odyssey. I have spoken.